Good afternoon, Manchester, Planned Parenthood, and anybody within the hearing of my voice. You may wonder why we come out, or I come out. I come out here because the Bible commands it. The Bible says very clearly in uh, Proverbs chapter 24, verses 11 and 12, to deliver those who are being taken away to death and those who are stumbling to the slaughter. Oh, hold them back. And if you say, this is God talking, if you say, behold, oh, yeah, if you say, behold, we did not know this, does not he who weighs the hearts understand? And does not he who guards your soul know? And will he not render to man according to his work? So what this Bible verse tells us, first of all, is to deliver those who are being taken away to death. And what I'm calling for are for mothers and fathers and those who are in Planned Parenthood not to take away the lives of these little innocent babies in the womb. You see, it says deliver those. Those means, according to God, that these little people, these little human beings, actually are human beings and they are worthy of life. They are worthy of being in the classification of those because they are made in the image of God. And being made in the image of God means <coughs> That God, in his law, says that thou shalt not kill. <coughs> That's why it says deliver those, those little innocent babies in this context who are being taken away to death. And whenever you take away, whenever you, you just call it abortion or termination of a pregnancy, whenever you do that, you are killing somebody. It's a life. You all know it's alive because if it wasn't alive, you wouldn't have to kill it. If it was not alive, you wouldn't have to take away its life. They come here to have the life extinguished. And the next question is what kind of life is it? Well, scientifically, biblically, well, I'll just talk scientifically. It is a human life. It is a human life that you are taking away, that you are murdering. Right from the moment of human conception, <clears throat> life begins. In fact, some latest scientific discoveries is that when the sperm and the egg are joined together into that zygote, there's actually a flash of light. What is that flash of light? Well, that flash of light is the procreation of God Almighty bringing life to a dead, uh, not dead, bringing life to something that was not alive before. A sperm was alive and an egg was alive, but it's very different when a sperm and an egg are joined together and they become a human being. God bless you, thank you. When that sperm and egg come together, join together, flash of light because God has used the man and the woman to create another human life. And that human life, right from the very beginning, is a human being. And as a human being, they are worthy, they are worthy of the law of God, the protection of God, and the protection of the state on the, the authority of God. But you see, Connecticut is a wicked state. Connecticut is a wicked state because they allow the legal slaughter of innocent human beings in the state of Connecticut. And just because the state says it's okay does not make it okay. I mean, the state has said that slavery was okay. Read the Dred Scott decision, even here in the state of Connecticut, there was a time when slavery was legal. 
Well, just because the state says it's okay does not make it okay. God is the ultimate authority. When God's law says something is wrong, something is evil, it is wrong and it is evil according to the law of God. So that when, even if the state says you could do it, and you're doing this under the protection of the state of Connecticut, of the Supreme Court, of the governor, of the legislature, of the House of Representatives, and the Senate, and the voters, because the voters voted these clowns, murderers, into office. The state is not above God. The state does not have the right to pass laws that defy the law of God. The Nuremberg trials testify to that. Just because in Nazi Germany they allowed there to be the legal extermination, the legal killing of the Jews does not mean that that's okay. Just because, just because Nazi Germany said it's okay to exterminate, to kill, to murder the Jews, never made it okay. <coughs> So the state does not have the right to circumvent, to override the law of God. And the law of God is absolute. The law of God, the law of God says thou shalt not murder. And these are human lives. When you take the life of an innocent baby, you are taking the life of a human being. You could rationalize, you could ignore, but someday you will stand before God and you will realize that you are participating in the culture of death. You are taking a human life. It's alive, obviously, or else you wouldn't have to kill it. And it's a human life. It's not a giraffe life. It's not a cat life, it's a human life. And the Bible says, thou shalt not kill. The Bible is very clear about that. And just as that little girl was a little baby. Well, don't go here. Why would you give them your money? They kill babies. Why would you give them money? Go someplace else. Don't feed this beast. They kill babies in there, justifying using Planned Parenthood. Golly. Unbelievable. But the Bible says, deliver those who are being taken away to death. And that's what I'm here to do. To encourage people, dissuade people, certainly from using this death camp for any other services, doesn't matter what you're here for, this place, your dollars go to a death mill. We are called to deliver those who are being taken away to death and those who are stumbling to slaughter. Oh, hold them back. And all I can do is use my words. In the state of Connecticut, all I can do is, is the freedom of speech that we have in the First Amendment to persuade people and dissuade them from murdering their offspring or supporting a death camp like Planned Murderhood. And these little babies don't come here themselves. These little babies don't come here themselves. They are brought here. That's why it says deliver those who are being taken away to slaughter or to death and those who are slumbering to the slaughter. Because Planned Parenthood is all about the murder of innocent little human beings. And sir, I pity you to even go inside of that place that kills little innocent human beings. I'd rather scrub toilets at a rest stop than participate in a place like this where they kill little innocent babies. And in Nuremberg trials, they said I was just doing our job. We were just doing our job, but that's no excuse. Planned Parenthood is all about death. 
Planned Parenthood is all about the murder of innocent little human beings. Here they kill little children, either poisoning them, Planned Parenthood's all throughout Connecticut, surgically chops them to little pieces, rips them limb for limb, sheds their innocent blood. That's what Planned Parenthood is all about. This, par this picture here, this picture here shows the results of what abortion is all about. It's a picture of an innocent little baby that has been hacked to pieces, legally hacked to pieces. This is what Planned Parenthood, this is what pro-choice is all about. It's about killing little innocent human beings. And as a follower of Jesus Christ, I'm called to deliver those who are being taken away to death and those who are stumbling to slaughter, to hold them back. And how sad that Christians all over Connecticut are not standing at death mills, they're not standing before the legislature, they're not standing before the Supreme Court. Because churches, by their complicity, complacency, they have complicity. Churches all throughout Connecticut by not standing against this. God speaks to them. Because God says in verse 12, Behold, if you say, Behold, we did not know this, does not he who weighs the heart understand? God is the one who sees the heart 100% accurately. Only God judges accurately. Only God is the just judge. And if anyone says, I did not know that little babies were slaughtered at Planned Parenthood, you have no excuse. You cannot say, we did not know this was happening. The Church of Jesus Christ cannot say that they did not know that innocent babies were being killed at Planned Parenthood. You can't say it because we all know exactly what happens here. We all know exactly what happens when a person, when a woman takes RU-486. We know that another life is being taken. And you say a woman has a right over her body, I say she does, but she does not have a right over the body inside of that body. That's a different life it's a different human being. And that little innocent baby should have the legal right to live. Should not be slaughtered. Should not be slaughtered. Legally slaughtered. <laughs> if you say you don't know, you know. That's why people get upset when people like me, an abolitionist, comes in front of a Planned Parenthood and preaches the truth. People swear at us, people try to ignore us, people try to call the police. They try every way to shut down the truth. God says, behold, if you say we did not know this, does not he who weighs the hearts understand? God sees the heart. God knows the situation absolutely perfectly, absolutely clear. God is the one who knows. God is the one who sees. God is the one who understands absolutely perfectly. And does not he who guards your soul know? You see, we all will stand before God someday. We all will stand before God. And if you are not in Jesus Christ, if you do not stand in the holiness and the righteousness and the blood of Jesus Christ shed upon the cross, God will say to you, depart from me for I never knew you. It is only through Jesus Christ that we can have forgiveness of sins. It is only through the gospel of Jesus Christ that we can have the forgiveness of our sins, that God can and will forgive us of our sin. And so if you turn to Christ, God can and will forgive you of all your sin, of any abortion that you've ever participated in. 
We know the truth, you know the truth, that's why you don't want to hear it. Because killing innocent babies is a sin before God and being part of Planned Parenthood is participating in the culture of death. But there is still time to turn away from your sin. There's still time to repent of your sin. There's still time to come to God the Father through God the Son by God, the power of God the Holy Spirit. The Bible says at the end of verse 12, and will he not render to man according to his work? And the answer to that question is a resounding yes, he will render to man according to his work. And when you are in Jesus Christ, God will render to you the righteousness, the holiness, the forgiveness, the purity of Jesus. And if you are not in Jesus Christ, if you do not trust in him alone for salvation, then God will render to you your own works, which is filthy rags, as the Bible says. The Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags. Your works are as filthy rags. It is only the righteousness of Jesus Christ where we can have forgiveness of our sins, sir. It is only through Jesus Christ that our sins can be washed away by his blood. Only by the death of Jesus Christ, the innocent Christ, the Son of God and the Son of Man, that you can have your sins forgiven. That is only through the work of Christ that your sins can be forgiven by God and washed away and you can be declared righteous by God Almighty because he will give you the holiness and righteousness of Jesus Christ, the work of Christ. Will he not render to man according to his work? It is either through the work of Christ or the work of your own hands, which are as filthy rags in the eyes of God, in the justice of God. And so when you stand before God, even now, and on that day, that judgment day, because that day's coming, you will either stand before God in the holiness and righteousness, in the blood of Christ, in the work of Christ, or you will stand before God as a sinner, one whom God abhors, because you have done evil and you have been evil in his sight and you did not turn away from your sin. You did not repent of your sin and turn to God. Turn to God the Father through God the Son by the power of God the Holy Spirit. One God, three persons. The holiness of God, the forgiveness of God, the justice of God, the, the love of God seen in the person and work of Jesus Christ. And God calls those who are named <coughs> according to the name of Jesus Christ. He calls us to deliver those who are being taken away to death. And those who are stumbling to the slaughter, oh, hold them back. May my words hold them back. If you say, Behold, we did not know this, does not he who weighs the heart understand? And does not he who guards your soul know? And will he not render to man according to his work? The answer to that question is yes, he will. Either it is the righteousness of Christ, or it is your own righteousness. And you can turn to Christ this day. You can come to Christ this day and receive the forgiveness that God has for you. Whatever sin you've committed, be it the sin of abortion, be it the sin of lust, of adultery, be it the sin of stealing, be it the sin of hatred, the, the sin of murder, the sin of idolatry, God can and will forgive you by the power of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. That's the marvelous gospel. The word gospel 
is an English transliteration of the word good news. The good news that God has for us is that through Christ our sins can and will be forgiven. Do you believe that, sir? Yes, I do. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. A lot of people say they believe it. Even Satan believes it. But it's a matter of appropriating it by the power of the Spirit into your life. It's a matter of following what God calls of you to repent of your sin, to come to Jesus Christ, to follow Him, to worship Him, to obey Him. Because God has made a way for us to be forgiven through the person and work of Jesus Christ. God the Father in His beautiful love for us has made a way. But those who follow Jesus Christ, it's not just about individual forgiveness. God requires His people, those who call upon His name, to establish justice here on this earth. He requires the church not just to do social justice, but to establish justice here on earth in the name of Jesus Christ by calling out and crying out for the lives of innocent babies by establishing laws that will not allow there to be the legal murder of innocent human beings. Pastors who just stay behind their pulpits Pastors who just stay behind the four walls of their church thinking that's all that they're called to do are in great deception. I came by several churches on the way here. Why aren't those churches out here? Why aren't those pastors leading their congregations? God knows. Behold, if you say, behold, we know this. They know what's going on here. They know what's going on in the state of Connecticut, and yet they turn a blind eye. Yet they turn away. Yet they think they're doing what God wants them to do, which is only partially true. It is the job of the church to proclaim the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. But it is also the job of the church of Jesus Christ to establish justice, to preach the law of God the law of liberty, as Paul says, yea, we establish the law in the book of Romans. And the establishment of the law first comes by submitting yourself to Jesus Christ, to repenting of your sin, to humbling yourself before God and asking His forgiveness through the blood of Jesus Christ. But the establishment of justice then means by the power of the Holy Spirit that we as Christians are supposed to be salt and light. Not just, not just a building, a church building, a 501c3 incorporated church building on some roadside that has to have a sign in front of it to tell everybody why they're there and what they are. That's not salt and light. Salt and light means that Christians come together, worship God Almighty, covenant worship, praising His name, extolling the name of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, of praying, of worshiping, of praising Him, of hearing His word, of participating in the Lord's uh, <coughs> covenant meal, the Lord's supper, baptizing covenant members, babies and adults, and going out into the world and establishing the truth of Jesus Christ, going out into the world and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ and calling for, calling for the end of abortion, calling for the end of the slaughter of innocent human beings. That's what God calls His people to do. And we all need the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. I encourage you to don't put your money in this place. Go someplace else even if it costs more. 
Because Planned Parenthood is all about death. They're all about killing little innocent human beings. That's what they do here. That's their main goal. That's their main function. I encourage you to come to Christ, to trust in Him alone for salvation, and not participate in the dark, evil deeds of places like planned murderhood. Because they distribute pills that women take in order to kill their innocent little babies in the womb. And Planned Parenthood participates in the surgical butchering of innocent little babies. It's a wicked place. I hope you don't work here. Because it's all about death. It's all about killing little babies. And if you say they're not human beings, they are human beings made in the image of God. Repent, run, work at McDonald's, do something else. Don't work here. Don't go in there. Don't kill your baby. You will regret it for the whole life that you have. You regret it for your whole life. The glory of the gospel is that God can and will forgive us. He'll forgive us of our sins. And He'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness as we forgive our sins before God. I mean, as we confess our sins before God Almighty. So I got to go. I got to go back to work. I pray, God Almighty, that your word will go forth. It will not return to you void. That you will save the lives of babies and convert the hearts of these people. That there will be children that are born and there will be people that are born again. By the power of your Holy Spirit. Oh God, bring about your holiness and your righteousness this day. Abortion certainly is murder. Taking the lives of innocent babies. I'll preach a little more since she's coming in. That's just taking the life of human beings. The sign says abortion is murder. <coughs> that, <coughs> excuse me, that's what Proverbs chapter 4 verses, excuse me, 11 and 12 are all about. To deliver those who are being led off to death. To hold back those being led to the slaughter. Abortion is murder. And someday abortion will be abolished. Someday abortion will be abolished. It's going to happen because this is such a wicked atrocity. A holocaust that is happening here in the state of Connecticut and all through the United States of America and all over the world. Someday God is going to end this child sacrifice in our land because he will ultimately come again. His will is going to be done on earth as it is in heaven. That prayer will be answered. That prayer will be answered. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's what the Lord's Prayer says. And His will is the protection of innocent babies. His will is to end child sacrifice. His will is to end abortion. That's the will of God. I can tell you 100% without doubt God is against child sacrifice. God is against abortion. And his prayer says, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And as every time a Christian prays that prayer, the Spirit of God will bring it about, will bring it to bearing. It is going to happen. It will happen. child sacrifice will happen. I mean, will be abolished here in the state of Connecticut. It's going to happen. 
Maybe not in my lifetime, I pray that it does, but it will happen someday. Someday it will be a, a, a crime by the state, it will be conformed to the law of God. Those little innocent babies inside the womb, they are babies. They are human beings created in the image of God. They are beautiful in His sight. God loves little children. Jesus Christ said, let the little children come unto me and do not hinder them, for to such belong the kingdom of heaven. I hope you don't work there. I hope you don't go in there. That's blood money if you're working there. God will not bless you. Go get a different job. Because God will not bless your life. Hear my words. You are under the curse of God for working there. God will not bless you. His hand is against you. You say, I did not know, but you know. You know the truth, even if it's for 10 seconds or a few seconds walking from your car. You know the truth. Abortion is murder. Abortion will be abolished. And I'm not a pro-lifer. I'm an abolitionist, an abolitionist of abortion. We are calling for the absolute and total unequivocal end of abortion. Not incrementalism of the pro-life, not regulation, but the total of abolition. Equal justice and equal, equal protection for all human beings, regardless of the stage of their development, or the color of their skin, of their mental capacities, or their physical, or, or physical deformities, or whatever. All human beings. All human beings are created in the image of God. All human beings, regardless whether they're a zygote, whether they're a fetus, whatever you want to call them, they are human beings. And they deserve to live. They deserve the right to life. They deserve equal protection under the law. But they don't get that in the state of Connecticut, nor any other state in the Union of the United States of America. And therefore, the United States of America is under the judgment of God. And until we repent in the state of Connecticut, first the church, and first in the church the pastors, and then the people in the pew, and then Christians all over the state and all over the United States of America, if my people turn from their wicked ways. It's not until the people of God first repent, and then the people, the population, and then the legislature, the House of Representatives, and the Senate, and the, the uh, Secretary of State, and the Governor, and the Justices on the Supreme Court. It's not until we repent of our sin here in the state of Connecticut. It's not until then that God will turn his hand back and even then I don't even know if he will because we've shed so much innocent blood. We deserve all that we get by the hand of God and it is only his mercy that he does not destroy us right now completely because we all have blood on our hands. God have mercy on us. We know what we do. We know what we do. We know what abortion is. We ask God that He would forgive us. Forgive us for the slaughter and the killing of innocent babies. Because these little babies are made in the image of God. Why would you even go into a place like that, ma'am? Why would you even participate in any way, shape, or form in Planned Parenthood? It's murder. But God can and will forgive you in Jesus Christ if you come to Him. Whatever you've done, it doesn't matter whether it's abortion, whether it's adultery, whether it's whatever sin, God forgives us in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't ever come back to this place. You would participate in this place in any way. You're under the judgment of God. He's angry with everyone who participates in the death of children. But God can and will forgive you in Jesus Christ. 
you turn to Christ, there's forgiveness in Jesus Christ. He will wash away all your sin. All your sin. All your sin, ma'am. All right, I need to get going. To God be the glory. Amen. Facebook Live real quick. <coughs> so this is Norman. Patterson Jr. I'm the uh, I don't know founder director abolitionist that um, started the Connecticut Foundation to abolish abortion. We're pulling people together. We have a group chat, um, keeping each other informed, praying for one another, joining one another. If you would like to be part of the um, Connecticut Foundation to abolish abortion, please message me here on Facebook or get in contact with me. I'm easy to get in contact with and become part of the group um, in any way, shape, or form. Become part of the foundation to abolish abortion here in Connecticut. Um, I'm in front of the Manchester murder mill and um, just praying and, and asking and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ that he will um, soften the hearts of these mothers that come in here and people come in here for all kinds of reasons don't use Planned Parenthood even if it costs more somewhere else gosh don't come here this this money is tainted with blood so continue to pray for Connecticut continue to pray for the Connecticut Foundation to abolish abortion continue and Christians here in Connecticut why are you not part of the uh, foundation even if you're not part in Connecticut join the Connecticut Foundation and you know pray for us and hear what's going on and support us give me advice I'd be glad to to take counsel um, yeah you don't have to be part in Connecticut you have to sign the Norman Oklahoma statement um, you could find it on www.abolishabortionct.org or you could find it on uh, um, T. Russell Hunter's site, um, abolitionistrising.com. Um, uh, but, you know, to be part of the Connecticut Foundation to abolish abortion, you have to agree with the Norman Statement. We're not pro-life. Pro-life is like, yeah, let's just regulate abortion. Let's let there be some child sacrifice. You know, we'll, we'll take little incremental regulations and think that that's a victory. No, you cannot, you cannot be satisfied and okay with any abortion in any way, shape, or form. It doesn't matter uh, from zygote to birth. If you are participate, if you're pro-life, you need to leave the pro-life movement. Pro-life movement, mil John Speed talked about it the millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars that are being donated to pro-life organizations and yet the Republican Party um, has abandoned, now has become officially Moloch worshipers because they officially believe that it's okay to, to slaughter innocent human beings. So where have all that millions of dollars gone to the pro-life industry? It's money and they've gotten money hungry. I, don't, I, I do this on my own. I'm not paid by anybody. God provides. I'm not looking for anybody's money. I'll take donations so we can continue on, but uh, I'm not begging for money. Not at all. We, 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 God, we don't need millions and millions of dollars to abol abolish abortion. We just need men and women who love God, who are passionate, uh, passionate about Jesus Christ, who want hearts to be changed by preaching and proclaiming the gospel and who will cry out and call out for the lives of innocent human beings to call for mothers and fathers to repent of their sin, to not kill their babies, to call to people that are working in this death mill, like the, 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 the soldiers at Auschwitz and all the rest of the death camps in Nazi Germany. That's what they are. And to call out to them to repent and not participate in this place. So, yeah, join. 
and um, we have a WhatsApp group right now and we're joining everybody together to pray. Pray for us. That's the most important that God will bless our efforts. All right, I need to get back to work and um, God bless you all.